All right, cooperators. I'm Dr. Mkulisi. Uh, some call me Bacchus. I'm the marketing director of ProMedical Primary Cooperative. In this video, I'm going to take you through the cooperative concept and uh, touch a bit more on a ProMedical Primary Cooperative. I must be honest uh, that I won't be able to cover everything about uh, the cooperatives. Neither will I be able to cover everything about a ProMedical Primary Cooperative. So for, <clears throat> for those who would like to know more, of which I encourage uh, everyone to know more about uh, cooperatives, uh, I would encourage you to visit uh, Dr. Google. And uh, all you do is just uh, uh, Google cooperatives. However, I would uh, strongly uh, recommend that uh, you start with the Act first. Uh, that is Act 14. Uh, they call it Cooperative uh, Cooperatives Act 14 of 2005 as amended. If you can start with uh, the Act, it will give you a very solid foundation to understand where cooperatives come from and where we're going. And uh, you can also uh, Google um, the Department of Trade and Industry Strategy on Cooperatives. And if you have uh, some time, you can also uh, check the International Cooperatives Movement. And I'm sure that would help uh, in giving you a very strong um, foundation or understanding of what cooperatives are all about. And then as for ProMedical, Primary Cooperative, I encourage you to visit our website www.promedicalprimarycooperative.com. Then you have everything there ranging from a uh, little bit of uh, on history of cooperatives, uh, pro-medical uh, 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 primary cooperative background, why uh, was it formed, when, what is our business model, who can join, who cannot join, uh, and so forth. There's quite a lot there that you can read about. Uh, this video is long overdue. Uh, it was uh, requested long, many months ago uh, by Dr. Matebula and Mandy, uh, the two beautiful ladies in our cooperative. And unfortunately, I didn't have the time to put it together. And uh, I would like to apologize uh, for that, but also thank them for actually having requested the video. And uh, Mandy, Dr. Matebula, the video is here now. And uh, I think the reason why they wanted the video uh, was that uh, they needed something, a tool that they can use uh, to uh, encourage people to join the cooperative, to make people understand what this animal called the ProMedical Primary Cooperative is all about. Um, and uh, they also believed that uh, Pro ProMedical Primary Cooperative has not uh, been marketed very well, which is very, very true, because uh, most of the time we've been doing a uh, you know, a little bit one-on-one, -on -one. sometimes if we're lucky enough, group presentations there and there, and uh, dropping some WhatsApps and so forth. But anyway, thanks, Mandy, and uh, thanks, Fundi, Dr. Mansegula. Um, let me start with the definition of a cooperative. A cooperative is an association or an organization of people, or it's an organization that is owned, of course, by people, and uh, it's a democrat democratically controlled by these people uh, who call themselves members. Once they become part of cooperative, they call themselves members, and they have uh, one objective is to meet their economic social and cultural and or cultural needs or aspirations through a jointly owned and controlled uh, enterprise now we'll come back and unpack this definition because it's very very important uh, to understand this 
definition very very well now once this cooperative or this association or this organization has been formed there are certain things which will become now the responsibilities of these people who have started this cooperative their responsibility now would be to support or to consume the products and services that are produced by this cooperative that's the first thing otherwise what's the point of having a cooperative what it means is that they will now learn that they need to buy everything that they use every day from this cooperative. They must consume the products that are available here in this cooperative. You cannot have a cooperative that is producing bread. Just to give you an example. You no, know, then some cakes, whatever. And then uh, when it's time for you to buy bread and then you go to another business that is not your cooperative to buy bread. It doesn't make sense. The idea, if you look at that definition, we need to address our economic needs. So therefore, we have a vehicle to do so. Then we start buying inside. Because we are buying from ourselves. We are building ourselves. That's the first thing that the members of the cooperative must do, need to do, and they must know. Many people don't know that. They think that you can have a cooperative and then you go and buy someone. No. Buy from yourself. It's like having your own business. Then you go and buy from another business. You can't. You have a pharmacy, you buy tablets from your own pharmacy. That's 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 simple as that. You don't have to be a genius to understand that. Now, the second thing that these people need, besides consuming the products and services produced by this cooperative, the cooperative can, in turn, buy products and services from them. That's making their businesses to work and work better. So it means the cooperative can simply say, okay, bring your products to the cooperative. The cooperative is going to buy and sell them outside the cooperative. How beautiful is that? So it's a powerhouse. And then now, at times the cooperative may have a good muscle depending uh, on a service or a product. It can actually just do an offtake if it's a certain product. Maybe somebody has manufactured a good soap and then uh, the cooperative says listen you are our member we have manufactured this good soap and then we do an offtake and then we're going to put this uh, soap in the shelves of uh, the chain stores whether it be uh, uh, checkers or pick and pay or whatever you know and then you get your money and then the cooperative makes a little bit because we did an offtake we negotiate the price and then we walk and then we put it in the shelves of other chain stores and we sell it to the public <coughs> The other thing that it is going to happen is that once now the cooperative has generated money, it distributes this money among all the people who have got shares in the cooperative. That's why they had shares, because they, 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 they own part of the cooperative. Okay? And then, uh, of course, lastly, the cooperative would then uh, keep some reserves. For future emergencies now let us go back like i promised and unpack some of uh, the unpack the definition and looking at uh, the keywords that i think uh, are important in the definition of a, of a cooperative let us look for instance at ownership when you say you own a part of a cooperative it means you have you own a share you own a portion of it there's a, a little share for you and for you to own uh, 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 something you must own something that has got value otherwise there's no point you cannot own zero you should own something that does get a, a value that makes sense you, that it can be owned it must have value and uh, anything that uh, uh, that 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 you own because obviously you know from the definition we know that uh, this business or this or uh, 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 um, cooperative needs to meet our social, economic, and cultural needs, and then using a vehicle, which is an enterprise in this case. So any business needs money, so people then they put down their money, and then you own a portion of it. So you mean you own some shares. And then uh, now, the fact that you own the shares, it means you are attaching value, you know, to, the, to, to your shares. There's value now. You have put down the money. And then the cooperative charges you a joining fee. That joining fee gets converted 
into into shares it gives you a certain number of shares and uh, those shares uh, are what you own is your value uh, it's your interest in the business and uh, now it means you have to protect it and uh, how do you protect your interest because if you protect your interest the idea is to protect it and grow it uh, otherwise uh, if you don't grow it uh, you know uh, protect and grow it then it wouldn't make sense it's, it's, a, it's a business you have got to grow it all of us we need money and we need more money and then uh, it's an asset now and then we know now that uh, once you are a member and uh, you own your shares you need to protect them you protect them by participating now in all the decision making structures of the cooperative so you want to make sure that uh, you have influence, you can influence the strategic direction of the cooperatives. You participate in policy formulation and decision making. And uh, not only do you attend meetings, you participate, but you also vote. And uh, this democratically controlled, it means in a context of cooperatives, it means one man, one vote. So it means where the, there's a need, uh, where consensus uh, could not uh, work and therefore any matter has got to be decided by a vote then uh, it's a principle of one man one vote so it means if i have five thousand shares and uh, another person a member of a cooperative has five shares our votes are equal our votes are in pero paso they are equal they ra they rank equally it doesn't mean that because he has five uh, shares and I've got 4,000 or 5,000 shares, then I overpower him and I can push a particular line in the particular direction and then uh, his voice won't be heard. No, will uh, uh, both of us be heard. Now, that's uh, dealing with uh, ownership and democratic con uh, uh, controlled uh, um, cooperative. Now, let us deal with uh, the issue of uh, meeting the economic, social, and cultural needs and aspirations. How, how, how does a cooperative achieve that? Cooperative will achieve that by setting up an enterprise that is going to generate revenue and therefore profits. And those profits, then they are split amongst all the members according to the number of shares that uh, each member holds. Uh, in the cooperative. So those who hold more shares, they get more. Those who hold less shares, they get less. Because obviously, maybe you might have invested less. Another person might have put in 10,000 and then you put half, 5,000 rand. So instead of uh, getting, um, when the profits are split, instead of getting uh, 10,000, you'll get 5,000. Because that's that's what uh, you have in terms of the, the number of shares. Now, the business uh, as it is set up its main objective is to address the economic social and uh, uh, the cultural needs of, of the members so if the profits are good therefore the socio-economic uh, 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 standard of of the of the members improves and uh, they can now suddenly have more money uh, to go on a holiday with children, they can afford to to buy a car, they can afford to have a house, a decent house, they can afford to go out and watch the children when they are playing uh, soccer, you know, they can they, they, they can go to, to movies now. Life is good because the, pro, pro, the, pro, the, the profits are good and the cooperative has delivered. So that's basically... Uh, it when that it that, that's it when it comes to looking at the uh, zooming in on the on the definition now pro medical is exactly um, a cooperative it fits the definition um, pro medical is highly specialized therefore it would uh, somehow uh, have uh, certain special reasons why why it was formed that uh, i'll talk to you very very soon but for now at this stage it's important for me to say pro medical was uh, formed by uh, medical doctors in 2017 and uh, i'm i'm one of those people who were in the forefront of uh, setting up uh, uh, 
uh, pro medical i remember the the first member <laughs> to join uh, was actually uh, dr rangaka uh, and uh, uh, after we had promoted the the cooperative but that's a, a discussion for another day but anyway uh, 2017 doctors formed it but soon uh, we realized that we needed uh, other people who have got uh, certain skill sets set uh, skill, certain skill sets that we don't have and then we went on uh, to invite the allied uh, uh, health workers and then we had uh, also people outside the the health industry or uh, uh, like uh, lawyers accountants it and so on and so forth so yes so it has got um, um, other people from other fields although it was started by by by, by doctors so now uh, of course it is a democratically uh, controlled one man one vote and uh, in terms of the social uh, economic and cultural needs it is because it is highly specialized even that in the definition becomes specialized yes uh, it, it, we, we, it does, uh, of course, it needs to address the social, the cultural, and the economic needs of the of the doctors. But there's something very central with uh, with doctors. If this cooperative cannot address um, uh, the issue surrounding uh, the the patients that the the doctors um, or the the the, the, the what to say the health industry exists for therefore it would have uh, failed in actually uh, 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 doing what the doctors uh, ex expect uh, and uh, and their patients of course expect so with pro medical because it is so specialized it is focusing primarily on the it is centered around around the patient uh, what I mean by that is that um, instead of worrying too much about uh, our uh, economic, uh, social, and cultural things, we are more worried about uh, how can we improve uh, healthcare delivery. We are looking at the patient at the center because we know if we can be successful in delivering a very good uh, healthcare system, or I mean, let's say a, a very good uh, healthcare service to the patients, then we know that uh, we are um, getting what we 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 supposed to get um, in a, in a, with a clear conscience, and uh, whatever money that we make, at least we know that uh, first of all, us as healthcare professionals or as doctors, we have achieved our first priority, which is to make sure that uh, we deliver a good healthcare service to, to our patient. So that's what makes uh, uh, ProMedical a little bit uh, specialized. But like any other business, it is a business. It's not charity. It is a cooperative. Is that right? It is a little bit uh, different uh, from, 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 the, from, the, from the other cooperatives. There's still profits to be made, but uh, we always want to make sure that uh, we make uh, those profits with a clear conscience. We don't walk over dead bodies. And uh, also we make sure that uh, the cost of health is contained in the country. And as we know, most of us, that uh, is, uh, the cost of health is just going to the roof. So now, that brings us uh, to the reasons why cooperatives are formed. There are many reasons why cooperatives are formed. But one reason that maybe let's say the few of many um let me just look at the general reasons why people form cooperatives cooperatives are formed because people want to put together their limited uh, resources or scarce resources and then once they put to, put them together they want to achieve a, a bigger goal they want to achieve something bigger um and then uh, something that uh, cannot be uh, achieved by an individual or that can take too long for one individual to achieve. Let me just give a very silly example. We wanted to buy the Cape Town, you know, the beachfront in Cape Town, Camps Bay. Then we start buying uh, one man to buy one house. It can take him to, can work hard for many years. 
But if we come and we're 1,000 and we're putting 10,000 rands every month, you can buy a house almost, uh, you know, um, every, uh, just roughly, you know, every month, so to say, and rent it out and buy another one. So we may end up actually owning Cape Town. But one person doing that, it can, it can be a machine. So that's the idea, roughly. Many people coming together, boom, they put a lot of money, I mean, small, small, small uh, money from each and one of us, and then after that, we end up with a huge amount of money that can actually seriously move mountains. And then there's another reason. Other people, they just want, a, you know, a buying power, to create a buying power, put their money together and go and negotiate a particular price, water it down, because you can do an offtake. If you go to a farmer, and then a farmer is uh, selling uh, one cabbage uh, for 10 rands, and then, uh, you know, you can negotiate that farmer to give you, uh, and that farmer has got maybe, let's say, about uh, 20,000 cabbages. And then uh, you can uh, uh, bring down that price uh, if you were to take the whole 20,000 cabbages uh, just uh, as, a, as an offtake, just like that. And then that, that farmer would, would be willing to come down and give you um, all the cabbages. And if you look at the, 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 the cost price uh, for each, even for something like six rands, and then uh, or at times five rands, because you remove all the 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 the, 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 the baggage of actually looking after them, and some of them they start getting spoiled, and so on and so on, and uh, there's also stock shrinkage, and so you just take everything, and then he can now decide to put some of his money back to the to the ground, and then he he enjoys some of the of the profits, and then he moves on, or he can diversify. Uh, his business can start doing other things or he can rotate the crop whatever he wants to do but at least uh, in business in business terms um, people who have got a, uh, a capital they can do anything there was money talk uh, money talk in this world and the rest uh, and, 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 and works you see so now so continuing with the uh, reasons um, for the formation of a pro medical primary cooperative. Over and above the other reasons that I've touched on, there are specific reasons for pro medical. Yes, of course, like any other cooperative, pro medical has got to address the socio economic needs of its members, of which pro medical is actually uh, doing exactly that. However, because ProMedical is such a highly specialized uh, cooperative, it has got, uh, over and above those reasons, it has got specific reasons. One of the very important reasons is that ProMedical has got to address the issues surrounding the delivery of healthcare services to the patients. Now, that, 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 that is key uh, to ProMedical. Now, whatever it does to address the socio-economic needs of its members, it has got to start here. ProMedical is in the business of health. That's, that's where we are. We are not in the business of mining, business of uh, uh, building and construction. That's not our core business. Our core business is health. That's ProMedical. That's where we have strategically positioned ProMedical. Morally and ethically, that's where uh, ProMedical is positioned. Now, if ProMedical succeeds in providing affordable, accessible, and comprehensive healthcare service to the patient, therefore ProMedical would say it has succeeded in its mission. It has succeeded in proving the reasons for its own existence. And therefore, it would then start looking at improving the socio-economic conditions of its own members. Without the patient, there are no doctors and therefore there is no pro-medical. So pro-medical is centered around the patient. And then now, it would mean necessarily that whatever ProMedical does it is, is in, in its own business, it has got to make sure 
that the patient wins. That's where we start. Now, the very interesting uh, part again that I want to bring in right now is that in its business model, ProMedical has got to address another issue, which is the issue of the community or the communities that the members of ProMedical live in and serve. What do we do about that? We have got to do something. It means we need to come with a, a plan on how to improve the social economic conditions of the communities that we serve and the communities that uh, some of us live in and serve. So, so pro, pro medical, it means now it has got uh, to address two things. It has got its own business matters that it has got to look at, but it has got also another business matter that it has got to look at, which is that of empowering the communities. And that is in line with uh, the vision, the mission, and the strategic objectives of cooperatives in the world. If ProMedical was not a cooperative, then probably it would just focus on its own business and say, well, this is what uh, we're here to do, period. And uh, the rest uh, forget. But because it has got this strong uh, component of being a cooperative over and above being a business, Therefore, it has got to address the needs of its uh, 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 immediate uh, uh, communities. Now, that's the reason. Now, for ProMedical to be successful, one of the very important things is that uh, the doctors themselves need to be united under the umbrella of a cooperative. Well, people can become, people can start other structures, whatever they want to start. But if a person is talking a cooperative, there is no room for competition. Unless maybe people don't understand uh, what cooperatives are all about. And they think that uh, they can go around starting new cooperatives and uh, uh, trying to compete with another cooperative. No, doctors must unite under one cooperative. In this case, I, I suggest and I encourage people that let us look at ProMedical. ProMedical has got a lot to offer. If you don't know, for instance, more about ProMedical, please find out about ProMedical. Inter 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 interrogate a ProMedical. Call the leadership. Phone me on my number and say, Bakos, Dr. Mkulise, tell me more about ProMedical. Criticize us. Tell us where you think we were wrong and, and so forth. But we need to build a, a, a ProMedical together. For us to be successful, we need to unite as doctors. Uh, if we are not united, we are not going to succeed. Uh, and cooperatives, naturally, they complement each other. They don't compete unless people don't really understand what cooperatives are all about. Just uh, to digress a little bit, I heard that uh, there were people who found reasons to open another cooperative uh, with a view of operating or of uh, setting up a cooperative bank, which is something that we have been promoting uh, to various gr uh, doctor groups. But I hear that there are people who came together. They want to duplicate exactly the same thing that we have already started. There's no reason to do that. Don't do it. Just come here. It's at home. Tell us what you think uh, you can contribute, what you think we can do better. And then we'll look at it and work together and then to achieve the common goal. Okay. Now, let me come to other reasons why ProMedical... Um, had to exist, or why it, uh, it, 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 it has been formed. One of the things that I've noticed, and uh, some of you would agree or disagree with me, it's fine, is that especially, especially doctors, remember when I keep on emphasizing doctors, don't be bothered about that. We're all healthcare workers, and uh, there are other people outside the, the medical field. But uh, I would always say, quite a lot of things I observed and uh, as a medical doctor. And then uh, I thought that it was important for us as medical doctors to organize ourselves in order to organize health. So when I keep emphasizing doctors, doctors, don't be bothered and think that, oh, this thing is about doctors. No. But of course, doctors are leading in this and they have got to lead. Okay, There's a reason. Health is led by doctors. And the doctors are the most senior people in the health, in, in a clinical setting. 
So Pro Medical spends most of his time. Uh, Pro Medical members, I would say doctors specifically, uh, most of the time around this clinical setting, which has become so abnormal that uh, doctors have actually lost control. And uh, you would know as a health worker yourself, uh, whoever you are, you can be an allied health worker or whatever, you would know that uh, when the doctors lose control, then things fall apart. So that's one of the reasons that uh, I picked up was that uh, through, through the years uh, of practicing medicine uh, in the state and outside the state. But let me talk about the state first. I, I noticed that doctors have actually lost control. They lost control uh, on the bigger part of uh, 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 clinical management of patients. There are certain groups of people who manufactured themselves in certain positions in the state hospitals to a point where they actually micromanage uh, uh, doctors. And uh, I'll, 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 I'll deal with this uh, in many videos to come because there's quite a lot of uh, series of videos that I'm going to be doing in various uh, 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 subjects that I've touched on as I'm doing this video. So they have lost control in the state. And uh, I don't want to take too much time because that's not the purpose of this, this video for now to deal with those issues. We have lost control in terms of the management of resources in the state, in terms of management of a bigger part of the clin clinical side of things in the state. And uh, this thing started long ago. Um, it was the days of um, Mantua Shabalala. Um, Simang, uh, that those days where she was the minister of, uh, of of health, and she came up with all sorts of nonsense that actually led to uh, the diminishing of power uh, uh, held by the doctors uh, in the in the state, and 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 uh, and there are so many grave consequences uh, coupled to that. But let me leave that for another video. Now. ProMedical is trying to restore that power, and it's going to do that. And we have a strategy, we know exactly how to do that. Uh, to restore uh, respect, to restore dignity, to restore the authority of doctors in the state hospitals. They've lost it. Okay. For those of you who have worked uh, in the state, I've worked, I've, I mean, I literally grew up in the state uh, hospitals. Okay. The other thing, Doctors lost control also in private sector, and I, I actually think private sector is worse. Uh, in the private sector, the lines are drawn along racial lines. And uh, it's no secret that uh, in South Africa, that is our reality. When you are a doctor, especially the African doctors, they are on the receiving uh, end when it comes to this. Most of the guys, they come highly qualified, have spent a lot of time, many years, you know, of training, you know, reach time and you finish and you spend some time as a consultant. Now, the guy or the or colleague comes, now he wants admission rights in the private hospital. He will be told by a person who is not even a, a medical to say, listen, we don't have space for you, you can't admit uh, but we will give you a shot. Or oh, in some hospitals, let me give you an example because I know these hospitals. I'm an anesthetist. I've worked in all of them. Now, they would say, uh, Doc, how many patients uh, can you uh, 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 cut You know, in a week? And if maybe you say, no, look, uh, I'll be cutting maybe for starters about five. They say, no, look, there is a, a, a doctor, you know, he's cutting 15 uh, per week. But anyway, Go and build your practice somewhere, please. Uh, let's talk again. Most of the time, guys, they go head on hand trying to get uh, admission rights. is very difficult. In fact, most of these white hospitals have drawn the lines. They are looking after their own white people. If you go to Sunning Hill, it's very difficult, for instance, as a black doctor to get the space there, unless maybe, you know, uh, to get the admission rights, unless maybe, you know, somehow... You know the guys from the circuit, and they, you know, they, they, they take you very seriously for one reason or the other. But generally, it's tough. Well, those who disagree with me say it's easy, it's fine. But that's my experience. That's what, that's what I've seen. 
And the other big problem is that we are, and okay, let me uh, mention that uh, ProMedical is trying to is trying to to deal with that. You will see uh, when I talk about uh, uh, the businesses that we do, we we are actually trying. We're not only complaining, but we are actually addressing uh, those issues as uh, as, as ProMedical. And then uh, you look at, for instance, uh, besides the issue of uh, uh, admission rights, you go and look at the, the the arrangement in the private in the private sector. We are basically as uh, as uh, as medicals, uh, uh, what I call better employees. We go there, uh, ask for admission rights, bring our patients there. Of course, we don't own hospitals. That's why we go to these people, and you know. If we had our own hospitals, it would be better. We don't have. So you have to go somewhere. And when you go to these guys, of course, uh, you are bringing your, you know, uh, patients to, 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 to cut there or to admit and treat whatever, if you are, if you are a physician or whatever, a pediatrician. And then you are basically making money for these people. These are big businesses. And uh, at the end of the day, you walk away with a fraction of the money that is made here. That is why ProMedical wants to change this, the whole thing. Because I'll give you an example. Uh, we, we do a lot of uh, a rough uh, WCA and so on and so on. You know, we cut a lot of patients there okay, with my team. Now, you'll find that these guys, they made millions and we walk away with a fraction. We need to change that. We need to change that. And uh, the other thing that uh, we need to, to change, to deal with, besides the issue of, uh, of admission rights, of uh, how much money uh, these guys make, here's the pending issue. If I am a medical doctor, I work in Tembisa Hospital, for instance, and... Uh, Maybe once a week, I have a patient that I need to operate. Why can't I take that patient and operate that patient in a private hospital? No, it won't happen. You will be told that, uh, no, you don't have admission rights. And therefore, you must hand over this patient to another doctor who has got admission rights. But you are a doctor. You are qualified, registered with HPCSA, Department of Health. And now you want to cut a patient. Or you want to admit and treat your patient. You are told, no, you can't. And you are told by a person who is not a medical doctor, who doesn't understand, what does it mean to have a patient going to a doctor and say, doc, can you treat me? And the doctor says, yes, I can treat you. Then says, please admit me in this private hospital. I want you to treat me. There's already an established relationship. But when you go and tell the hospital that, listen, I've got a patient. I want to treat this patient here. You are told, no. Sorry, you don't have admission right. And that actually even goes against uh, the health inquiry report. But anyway, that's a, that's a topic for another day. I don't want to take uh, too much time on that one. Now, let us uh, now uh, summarize uh, our, 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 our reasons. I've just mentioned those uh, a few reasons, but uh, the, 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 here's a burning one that uh, what is more important, well, to me, I'm sure also to uh, a lot of people who are healthcare workers, is the cost of health. To me, this, uh, well, obviously to quite a, 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 a lot of people that I've interacted with, the cost of health is worrying. And uh, the cost drivers here it's not the doctors. It's these hospitals. They are too expensive. They are just glorified hotels. These, 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 these hospitals, they, they, they charge, uh, you know, money like uh, from the movies. They, 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 they take an arm and a leg. And, and doctors charge a little bit. So ProMedical says, no, we can change this thing around. I'm, I'm, I'm going to deal with it when we deal with the businesses that they... Uh, uh, ProMedical is involved here. But ProMedical says, no, we can bring the cost of health down. So that's another reason why, why, why ProMedical Pro uh, has got to come in. 
Now, for us to 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 bring the cost down whilst at the same time providing a good, um, comprehensive and affordable uh, healthcare uh, services, then it would mean we need to uh, own something and control something. And there are two things in health that you can own and control. You can own and control infrastructure and own and control money flow. Those are the two things. Because the patients we already have. We already have patients. And if maybe you want to know where the patients, they are all over. I'm not even talking about the 9.5 million patients that are sitting on the medical aid. No. I'm talking about the middle of the pyramid, which is estimated to be about 15, 15 million. And we hope that when uh, um, our government, we hope that when our government gets the NHI right, and then we would actually have the other bottom of the pyramid coming to the pool. But for now, we're just talking about the middle of the pyramid, 15 million. And then we've got the two big funds that I just want to talk about, but I'll deal with them later. Um, that gives us a uh, very good reasons uh, to go uh, into this uh, business of owning the healthcare infrastructure. These two funds, WCA and Road Accident Fund, they are the biggest funds bigger than medical aid. I don't care about medical aid. I never made any time out of medical aid ever since I started practicing medicine. These are the two, WCA and Road Accident Fund. Unfortunately, the only thing you have got to get your documents right to get money from, from those guys. Okay, now for us to, uh, to provide or to deliver a good service to our patient, bring the costs of health down, and also make sure that ProMedical is successful, we'll have to, to, to own the infrastructure and deal with the middleman. Uh, in the middleman, in this case, and when it comes to money flow, you are, you are, you are talking about uh, the medical aids. Everybody knows, all the doctors know what the, the medical aid have done in this industry. They have, they, they, they have they have wrecked havoc here, you know. They, they've, they've, they've caused uh, big problems. They, they, they have disrupted the game. And uh, many doctors know that medical aids are not a, a reliable indicator when it, when it, when it comes to uh, the, the, treat, the treatment of, of patients. So that is, that is uh, what um, the reasons are for the, for the formation of ProMedical. Now, uh, cooperators, now that ProMedical exists and we understand the reasons of the formation of ProMedical, what we need to do now is to try and read quite a lot around cooperatives to make sure that we understand exactly the vision, the mission, and the strategic objectives of a, a ProMedical. Otherwise, without that, and then uh, we'll find it very difficult to explain to someone. When someone asks you, okay, tell me about uh, this uh, pro-medical of yours, and then you are stuck. So I hope that this video has assisted you to give you some tools or to, to empower you to be able to impart uh, information to, 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 to other people who might be interested in being part of pro-medical. And then the next video, uh, I'll be dealing with the, the businesses uh, that uh, ProMedical uh, is involved in and how people can take part. Thank you.